Hey, hey, hey. Time to uh, fix the Mantis. This little guy took a crash and as you can see, the motor busted. So, we're gonna replace it. Let's check it out. Okay, as you can see, we have a little motor problem. That guy smashed it into a tree and then it hit the pavement and that came off. So, first things first, we have to disassemble this so we can get to this motor here and uh, get it put back together. So first things first, we're gonna take this top. See the buzzer still connected there. We have our VTX right here. We're just gonna untwist that and move it out of the way for right now. Then we're just gonna take these standoffs. And that guy just lifts right out. And we'll just move it out of the way. Okay, so now I'm gonna take the actual motor off and the all-in-one so we can see exactly where those wires go. Got the new motor right here and then we're just gonna plop that in there and solder it up. So let's go ahead and take this motor off from back here. Okay, got some more standoffs to take off because this is soldered to the bottom. So these are plastic so you should be able to just do them with your finger. And that guy will lift right up. So then we can see those are soldered right there. Red, yellow, and black. And we're just going to match that up. So let's go ahead and open up the new one. Get that open. Got this on uh, Banggood, I think. We'll go ahead and put some links down there in the description, my affiliate links, so you can buy your own replacements if needed. Comes with uh, some screws, which is nice. Comes with the new motor which now has the shaft going all the way through so the bell housing won't come off and uh, we're just gonna replace that there so the easiest thing for me right now is to just go ahead and clip these three wires right here so we'll clip those three if my clippers would work and we can slide that out. And you can see how they go in through that hole. So there's the old one out with the old. And then we will just go ahead and thread these through. And we'll check the length here in a minute. But I'm guessing we'll end up taking some of that uh, excess off. And then we go in with the new. So we can screw that right back on. But before I do that, I think I'm going to go ahead and take the props off, get a little bit more of this out of the way, give myself some room to clamp it up so I can solder it. So we'll do that and be right back. Okay, as you can see, we now have the props off. Got it clamped up in my little uh, helping hands. And I've got these three wires that I just clipped off. So we've got red, yellow, black. I'm going to go ahead and make a note of that. And... Uh, then we'll get to desoldering. So basically I'm just going to um, give these a little bit of heat while I pull some tension on them. And my soldering iron is not quite hot enough just yet. Still heating up. So once that gets hot enough, we'll uh, basically just pull a little tension, touch it, 
pull those off. Then we'll re-tin these and make sure we got good solder on those. Then uh, we'll put this up and make sure we have enough space. We'll probably trim a little bit off of these and re-tin the ends. Put those right back in place and put her back together. We'll go ahead and thread the motor that through. Make sure we got enough excess to come around. And then we'll just screw these guys back in the back. Right length bolts or screws here because you do not want those screws to go through the bottom of your housing here and touch any metal up here. Um, if it's touching you'll get shorts and uh, it may not work correctly or potentially uh, fry your motors, potentially fry your ESCs as well. Alright, so we got those screwed in. Make sure they're nice and tight. If you want, you can also throw a little dab of Loctite in there. Probably not a bad idea because I've noticed a lot of these have been coming loose. I don't know if you noticed when I took the top plate off, uh, it was missing a screw that I didn't even know it was missing. These are actually about the right length, so I don't think I'm even going to need to uh, trim these at all. I want to make sure I have enough that I can still work on it. But we're just going to solder those back up. Alrighty, so we've got that in place now. Both sides are tinned up. Now we're just going to take these and put them back right in the same place. Let's tighten this up a little bit so it doesn't move as much. And we'll get that centered. Hopefully, we'll be able just to get these right back in place. Red, yellow, black was the order, so red, yellow, black is how it's going back. lemon squeezy. Now we have this back if we can get it focused. Focus you fuck. There we go. So they look like they're pretty good connections. May as well zoom back out here a little bit. Look like they're pretty good connections. Um, pretty shiny solder balls and then we're just going to tuck that sucker back in there and get our standoffs back on it um, before you do that you may also want to plug your flight controller or uh, what is that yeah your flight controller back into your all-in-one so we'll do that before I get that down in there where it's going to be hard to reach It's just a little connector and you just plug it in. Okay. And we will get this back down on the standoffs and screw. because they are plastic so you don't want to strip them out okay so now the question is do I want the VTX to be back on top or do I want to remount it to the back and I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and remount this to the back and then figure out another solution for the antenna to keep it out of the way um, the main reason is because when it's up in the front you've got all the heat from the ESC's and the flight controller that uh, 
I don't really like that much heat up there. So we're going to uh, do that. Now the question is, which direction did my flight controller go? And that says that that was forward. If you got big fat fingers like me, this can be a bit of a pain, but should be able to just tuck it all in there. That is how you want it. There is a little arrow on the bottom of the flight controller that shows which direction it should go. So you want to make sure that arrow is pointing forward so you don't have to change any of your settings in beta flight. But once you have that together, then uh, we'll just put these standoffs back on top. This down. Once you get to where everything meets up, just give it a little bit of a tweak. Again, you don't want to overdo it because they are just plastic threads and you don't want to uh, Now you can see in here, maybe, um, I've got a wire pinched in between those standoffs. So I'm going to go ahead and unscrew that and make sure that wire is out of the way so it sits all the way flush. That way I don't have to do any corrections on the angle um, as far as recalibration of that flight controller. So we're just going to push these wires out of the way as much as possible and hopefully not knock any off of their pins. And once we get that out of the way, then we'll be able to uh, tighten it all back down. Okay, we've got um, the standoffs put back in. And we made sure that no wires were pinched in between the standoffs on both sides. And now I'm just putting the top plate back on. We're just going to screw those down. And if you notice, I did put the, uh, the VTX back towards the back, and we're going to figure out a different solution for keeping that antenna out of the props. Alrighty, last bit here. Took a little bit of twist tie. I don't know how this is going to do because it does have a metal inside of it. Um, hopefully it's not going to interfere with the VTX. In fact, I might actually switch this to a little plastic piece. Um, maybe from a zip tie and then I'll shrink wrap that in and then shrink wrap that to that so I think I am gonna go ahead and switch that to a piece of plastic just in case so it doesn't interfere with this and then we'll be done basically she'll be ready to fly again um, don't be uh, surprised about this little guy the, this thing looks tiny but I would say it goes about 20 25 miles an hour maybe even faster uh, it's got got some punch especially uh, since I picked up these these are 450 milliamp hour 8160C 2S batteries and uh, it, it picks those up just fine and um, that gives a little bit more run time so I would suggest getting these um, I they have the XT30 connector so I did go ahead and switch out this to an XT30 instead of the JST connector because um, it'll handle more amps going through it and uh, you won't have as much voltage drop um, with these batteries especially because they are 80C instead of the 30C that it came with which is this little guy right here um, and it's a 400 milliamp hour uh, it says 30C, but I think that's overrated because um, when trying to run this battery, it, it has some crazy voltage drop. And I just don't think that this thing's pulling that many amps, even at full throttle. So we'll get that buttoned up. And then uh, now that I've got my new Fat Shark, Fat Shark goggles, I've got um, DVR capability within the goggles themselves. So I'll actually be able to record some video flying this little sucker. So we'll see what happens. Thanks for watching, guys. It's a nice, easy fix. Um, again, you know, just replacing a motor, all you got to do is take your little standoffs off, pop their flight controller and your ESC out, and then solder those in. I mean, how easy can it get? It takes all of 10 minutes, and uh, you got a new motor on there. Um, 
I am going to go ahead and hook it back up to beta flight, make sure everything's calibrated before I do a, do a flight. But uh, we're good to go. Thanks for watching. Don't forget, make cool shit. Later.